choose inverses is let's say f of x is equal to um, x squared. What is f of the negative 1 between here and here? What is that going to be? It's not 1 over x squared. What you are thinking of is what most people do is that if you say this, then it would be 1 over x squared. What a lot of people confuse this with is if you go x to the negative 2, what's that? There's your 1 over x squared. This is different than this. These are not the same. These are different. And we'll find out what they mean in just a little bit. So see what you remember about inverses and how it might find the inverse of this. Something. We're going to play around with this a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that f of x is the same as what? y. Very good. y is the same as f of x. So would you write 5 plus 3 square root of x? Now, do you remember what the whole point of inverses was? The whole point? It was the point. You take the x and you switch it with the y. Inverse is the reverse of x and y. In, in shortcut, if you're finding the inverse, you, you are switching the x and you're switching the y around so that we have 3 times the square root of y. Do you remember doing that? A little bit? No? Okay. So when you find the inverses, you're trying to switch x and y around. So we're going to replace x and y. And now I want you to solve for y algebraically. So I see people feverishly doing some algebra. What's the first thing you're going to do to solve for y? What's, uh, before you do that, I would subtract 5, yeah. So you're going to get x minus 5 equals 3 times the square root of y. Then what would you probably want to do? Oh, okay, so we're going to divide by 3. Okay, so if you did that, then you're going to get x minus 5 over 3 is equal to the square root of y. So what would you do to solve for y? We're almost there. Oh, square both sides. Okay. Well, that seems like a total waste of time, doesn't it? Switching those x and y and then solving for y. Except, look at what you see here between these two functions. I'm going to um, highlight this one in green and this one in blue. Notice it kind of looks green. Oh, it's still green. I'm going to try blue again. There's blue with that yellow background. Okay, so what do you notice about plus 5? How does it look in here? Minus 5. How does times 3 look here? Divide by 3. How does square root look here? So what do you notice about the functions in an inverse? They're the total undoing of each other. So inverses undo each other. And you know that you've undone a formula perfectly if, remember when I took this point, 1, 8, I put in an x, and I put got a y to come out? Just for fun, let's put in an 8 for x. Or let's put the, the y in to the inverse. What's 8 minus 5? Over 3. 1 squared. Oh, that was just lucky. There's no way that's going to happen again. Let's take 411. Okay, I'm going to put the, take the inverse, so I'm going to switch these, and I'm going to put the 11 in for x this time. So now I'm going to put 11. What's 11 minus 5? 6 over 3? 2 squared? Oh, come on. Aren't you impressed? That's pretty cool. So the whole idea behind inverses is that there's four things I want you to know. One is, is that the points reverse. That's the main thing I want you to see. The points reverse. 2, 5 becomes what in an inverse? 5, 2. 11, 7, 11 becomes 11, 7. That's what inverses do. Uh, a couple other things. 
the domain of the function, the domain of the function, and the range of the function. The domains are all the x values, right? And the range are all the y values. What do you think happens in the inverse domain and range? Yeah, yeah. The, the range, the domain are the y's this time, and the range are the x's. And that is going to come in super handy because nobody wants to find ranges of functions, but domains are relatively doable. So we're going to find out how we can do that. So these are switched. Okay, that's nice to know. Uh, you learned this equation method where you have y equal to f of x. What you did is you switched x to be f of y, and then you solved for y. That's the technique. Make sure that you can do that on a homework assignment or a quiz. And then the third thing, probably the most interesting part, the media center will close at 3 o'clock today. Thank you. All right. So draw that function. Oh, is it a function? How do you know? Vertical line test, right? Vertical line test. Nowhere does an x hit more than once. We talked about functions before. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how I do this. I don't know if you can do it. I think you can. Here's how you draw the inverse on a, a graph. You turn it 90 degrees, and then you flip it upside down. I don't know if you can do that. Oh, it didn't do it. Then you flip it up and down. There you go. And what do you notice about the shape of this thing? Does it seem to have any symmetry to it? Like right through there? Right there? Yeah. This is kind of like a heart. Yeah. The uh, idea behind it is that you get a symmetry about y equal x. And why, what's special about y equal x? That's what we switched them with. And there's another reason y equal x is significant we'll get to tomorrow. But for this function, the blue one was a function. Is the black one a function? Is this a function? Y doesn't pass the vertical line test, does it? Now, what should we look at with the blue one to tell me that the black one is not going to be a function? What test do you think you could use? You want to try it? Okay, this blue one, the inverse, is not going to be a function. What test could I do on the blue one? There you go, horizontal line test. Because of the, the turn, 90 degrees, this is going to be a horizontal line test to see if the inverse is a function. All right, so that's good. Uh, there's more you can read about it, but it's essentially doing what we just did. Go to, and you can see more of this if you want. I'm not going to take the time to do all those. Let's go to your homework. Let's go to number four. You're going to do two things. You're going to find domain and range. And you're going to find the inverse of these. So let's do this one first. Number four, this is one of your problems. You're going to do all of the circled ones. And I think we're going to cross out 24 for today. Because we're, that's a challenger. I don't think we're going to get to that. All right, number four. What's the domain of this one? What's the domain? Is there an, anything we can't put in for x? It's all reals. So go independent Republican. No, it's far with a little line next to it. And then what's the domain going to be? Or range going to be? Well, I don't know. Wish I did. I'm sure it would be nice. Jet, should I show you how to do it? Okay. Wasn't going to do it, but Jet's pushing me. So we're going to do um, y equals 1 minus 4 plus 3x over 5. And we're going to find the inverse. What's the first thing that you're going to do? 
switch x and y, because we're reversing the coordinates, we can reverse x and y. 4 plus 3y over 5. What did you do first? Good. You subtract 1 first. So this is going to be x minus 1 equal negative 4 plus 3y over 5. And this whole thing is minus. So what should we do to both sides that would make things easy right now? I'd multiply by negative 1. I think that's a great idea. So now you have 1 minus x equal 4 plus 3y over 5. Now what should I do? Multiply by 5. So it's 5 times 1 minus x equal 4 plus 3y. Now what? Yeah, so this is 5 minus x minus 4 equals 3y. So 3y, 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 minus 5x. And then what? Oh, super. 1 minus 5x over 3. This is the inverse. And notice the little negative 1 goes between x and f. What's the domain of this thing? It is all reals, because there's nothing that we can't put in for x. <gasps> range of the original function. All reals. What's the range of the inverse function? All reals. And that's how you do it. So the point of this is that if you can find the inverse, the domain of the inverse is the range of the function. Huge. Hugely impressive. And you're going to do that for each of these. 2, 7, 12, 15, 17, 21, and 22.